I'm Von Rupp and welcome to a demo of the Virtual Crib version 1.5. We're on the main tab. This is our GUI. The GUI can utilize the full screen. In this case I'm not and I'm utilizing the extra screen by showing action logs and event logs. Everything on the screen you can interact with so I turned on the kitchen light, the photo cell saw it, updated the program. I can also trip motion detectors which will trigger the events that you see here. Two lights were turned on, the motion detectors picked that up, the photo cells, and lit up the room. There's one level on the motion detector, so the timer on it will be pretty quick. It should turn the light back off. A new feature is follow events. If I click follow events and then turn on an upstairs light, you'll see here I turned on the second bedroom light. Photo cells should kick in. There we go. So you can watch events as they occur around the house. I'll turn that off and we'll go back downstairs. Map edit mode allows you to take devices and place them wherever you want. So aligning your devices with your background images is really pretty easy. Some of the other modes we have is glass house. Our original blueprint mode. Remotes just showing how you can easily just crop images and assign them to features. This screen utilizes the USB UIRT infrared controller um, to control all of your home automation and other infrared devices. Uh, that's all new to version 1.5. Go back downstairs done editing. You can see here that the motion detector went off. It doesn't know where I went, but it turned the lights back off. Trip this motion detector, put me back by the computer. Alright, let's go through the tabs. I'm going to do them a little out of order because everything centers around devices. So we have quite a few devices on the system. In the system. If we look at a light here, we can see this is a X10 only light. If we look at the bathroom light here, we have X10 and Insteon. And when receiving an X10 command, it'll send out an Insteon command. So it tries to upgrade the signals. You can see there's four commands associated with this. I can click these commands and they're executed. Uh, and those should generate the equivalent events back in the system. So if we look at the logs here, we'll see lower bathroom light on lower bathroom light on, lower bathroom light is lit. So we got two events off of this one command. Now commands are what we send out outbound and we can see there's different types. We have Insteon, servos, speaker commands. Most of them are built around a simple event. We just simply select the event um, at which which process will control it so in this case it's Insteon add update it and we'll see a log here again triggers can be events they can also be status levels and uh, invariable changes time based so if we look at a, a, a trigger we'll see that all this trigger is is a device entryway light if it equals on that gives us this trigger. It says entryway light on. Now this one here is an event trigger. We can see that if this event occurs, sets off this trigger. Most of them are the same name. Some of them get complex like doorbell. This one here is an event trigger also, but it has stipulations. It says as long as the front door has not been opened within 240 seconds and Vaughn's car has not been home in the last 240 seconds, then you're allowed to use this trigger. All of that allows us to build actions to give our house uh, personality and uh, responses to the triggers that we just looked at. So if we look at the doorbell action, we say if the doorbell trigger has been fired and security equals home and front door equals closed, then execute this series of commands. That's 11 commands executed off of that criteria being met. We turn on some speakers, there's an outside message, then we turn on our inside speakers, out, uh, inside message, and then the Robo Sapien points up to the door. So um, it's really easy to put all that together. You know, if you just look here, you just 
drop downs, select your action, add it. If you want it to move in a different order, it'll swap them. If you don't want it, delete it. The user system still needs a little bit of work, but we're tracking how many people are in the house, where are they at. Um, but uh, but expect in version 1.6 for a lot of changes to occur in that system. Locations here, oh, this is the key if you're planning on using the GUI interface. Here's all of the maps that you have and um, how many lines of logs to show if you're going to show logs. You can see downstairs here, I have 50 devices assigned to this map. If I select a device, it'll give me the on and off pictures the locations for those pictures in their different states, where a user would be standing if they were interacting with this device. Uh, so that's all really easy to set and most of the most of it you can drag and drop these values on the other screen like I was showing. Locations here are not so much for the GUI but for the logical grouping of, of items and switches um, so the house the software has a better understanding of the house and how items interact. The speech system here, you can pick a group, it'll give you all the responses in that group and it'll play these randomly and by the oldest ones so it tries to stay fresh. Settings, a uh, few changes on here, version 1.5 we've added variables and variable values and you can update those, they'll trigger events and you can issue commands to update the values. In version 1.5, I've also taken a lot of the integrated processes and pulled them out so they can be upgraded, written in different languages. And so those processes update the system with a heartbeat. And we can see here when the heartbeat occurred. And if they did stop, here's the alarm time. Those alarms will generate emails, text messages, turn on the voice and, uh, and tell you that it uh, needs to be restarted. I'll work on automatically restarting them in a future version. We can also see we're looking at the computers here and uh, which ones are on and off to help troubleshoot. Well, that's about all the features I'm going to cover in this demo. Thanks for watching and look for some other videos of the back end systems coming soon. Bye.